I have to admit it, I haven't been totally fair with Iron Maiden guitarist Dennis Stratton. On this channel, I have covered some of his solos, but I haven't talked about him, his playing, nor his role in Iron Maiden's history in any meaningful way. So today, I want to make up for it as it's long overdue. So in this video, I'm going to highlight five really awesome licks that he played on the very first Iron Maiden album. It's really unfortunate that Dennis's work with Maiden tends to be overlooked because his solos on that first album are actually really good and they fit the songs exceptionally well. His style was different enough from Dave Murray's to give the band a true twin lead guitar sound and feel, but not radically so so that it would clash or be too contrasting. I've always thought that Dennis and Dave worked very well together and their solos complemented one another as naturally as any other guitar duo I can think of. The result wasn't really far off from what we can hear on the Killers album, if not for the fact that Dave and Adrian have always had a special kind of magic that couldn't be replicated with anyone else, regardless of how good a guitarist they might be. Because theirs is a combination of having two uniquely distinct playing styles, all while having a similar understanding of a solo's pacing and structure, whether it be worked out or improvised. It's that mental thing, as Adrian likes to refer to it. But the truth is, Dave and Dennis also made a very good team. Their playing styles blended really well on harmonies, trading solos back to back, or when their solos were separated by an interlude, or in the case of Strange World, half the song. The standout, to me anyway, is definitely Phantom of the Opera. And the way the solos play off one another in that song is just simply magnificent. Dave's solo is flowy and has that really distinct harmonic minor lick, and then Dennis comes in with a more standard pentatonic box style approach, which if you really break it down, is somewhat of a prototypical version of the solo Adrian would play on The Trooper three years later. Okay then, let's get to the licks. And I want to start with this really cool sounding lick from Sanctuary, which is a song that wasn't on the original UK release of the album, but was included on the North American version. It goes something like this. <laughs> So the first part of that is the classic rock and roll pentatonic circular run that we all do. But the timing on it is just a little bit different. Dennis is playing just ever so slightly behind the beat so that there's a little extra space between the notes. It's an almost imperceptible subtlety, but you definitely feel it. And the next part has an Angus Young-like swagger to it that just makes the entire solo for me. The next lick is the one he plays to end his solo on Remember Tomorrow. Go something like this. I love the elegant phrasing of this lick, especially the circular pattern of the melody and the little pause in the middle of it. It seems like a small detail, but it stands out in a big way and really gives the lick a touch of class. Although this next one may be the simplest lick of the bunch, I think it's a great lick mainly because of how he uses it in the context of the solo. It's from the instrumental track Transylvania, and he's playing a very Murray-esque descending legato pattern at the tail end of the solo. And instead of accelerating it, like, you know, something like that, he brings it home with a more deliberate climb to the final bend using quarter note triplets. This is actually a pattern that Adrian Smith tends to use a fair bit as well, but I guess the fact that Dennis played it first on a Maiden album is a feather in his cap. The opening lick to his solo on Phantom of the Opera is arguably one of his most recognizable, and this is due to his truly excellent use of the pentatonic scale. It goes like this. <laughs> That first short note is a rather unusual way to start a solo, especially in a progressive metal song like Phantom. It's definitely more of a blues trope than anything else. And that just makes it so cool. I also like how he seems to be playing the first half of the solo on the neck pickup, and then switches to the bridge when he starts the second half.
The last one we're gonna look at here is from his hauntingly beautiful solo in the dreamy ballad Strange World. This is pretty much what I consider to be a perfect guitar solo. The phrasing, the tone, the way the lines flow from one to the next, the pacing, and the way he develops the recurring melodic motif, it's all masterfully done. So for this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and play the entire solo because anything less would be tantamount to shortchanging Dennis's excellent work. I first learned this one when I was around 15 years old and just starting to learn solos by ear. Only thing is, back then I thought this was Dave Murray's solo because of that neck pickup kind of tone, plus it's somewhat bluesy in some spots. But eventually, as I developed my ear a little more and got better at recognizing certain details that make up a guitar's playing style and sound, I realized that the phrasing and vibrato are very different from Dave's. Dennis's playing was more to the point with shorter phrases and he didn't use slides and legato phrasing as much to connect the phrases. Also his vibrato was much faster and my guess is he was trying to mimic that of guys like B.B. King and Paul Kossoff. Now I'm speaking in past tense because his playing nowadays is a bit different. From the various videos I've seen of him playing live, he seems to have transitioned from less pulse to strats and super strats, incorporating more fluid legato, less linear phrasing and some pretty creative outside playing as well. His vibrato is now slower and wider, and he even uses a fair bit of whammy bar vibrato, which is something he obviously was not doing during his time in Iron Maiden. Dennis is going to be playing a series of shows in Brazil in December, so I'm looking forward to seeing footage, as I'm sure it's going to be absolutely awesome. And I just realized he has an active Instagram account, which I am now following. I'll link to it in this video's description, so be sure to check it out and support a guitarist whose playing is more familiar and more important to our musical journey as Iron Maiden fans than we might realize. Thank you all so much for watching and stay tuned for more licks of the beast.